A new rule out of Washington significantly undercuts the efforts of marketplace navigators. This is the Benefit and Payment Parameters Rule of 2019. It was finalized by CMS on April 9th. It includes a lot of major tweaks to the Affordable Care Act, medical loss ratios, essential health benefits, but it also takes a crack at navigator and in-person assistance. We're going to focus exclusively on that topic. We have other videos that go into some of the other elements of that April 9th rule. Let's take a look at what the rule actually says. It includes changes to the existing navigator requirements. Now, you'll remember under the health reform legislation, when it set up marketplaces, it identified the need for in-person assistance to make sure people could understand the rules, understand the application process, apply pick a plan and facilitate coverage moving forward. And navigators were one of the, the groups of people identified as the, the cornerstone to making that work. There are in-person assisters that come in many shapes and sizes. There's uh, certified application counselors. There are insurance agents. There are volunteers. Certified application counselors and navigators are two that have to go through some training requirements and some certification, and navigators take on the heavy lift of making sure that they can meet with as many people as possible in a, during open enrollment and for special enrollment periods to connect them to the coverage that best suits their needs. Now, the way that this was operated was money was set aside to make sure that navigators could be funded in their efforts. There were requirements of what navigators could look like in any given state, and this new rule coming out of CMS chips away at all of that. Let's look at what the language says. It calls changes that um, be needed to increase flexibility. Again, we're hearing that flexibility language coming out of Washington that they've been using for all of their market reforms. They remove the requirement that each marketplace must have at least two navigator entities. It most importantly, chips away at the language that says, and one of them must be a community nonprofit or con consumer focused group. And this was ensuring that it wasn't some out-of-state contracted agency warehouse call center that people were supposed to try to connect with when they needed help signing up for a marketplace plan. That requirement of having in-person assistance and someone at the community level is gone. Now, the second thing they removed was the standard requiring a physical presence. So the agency that could ultimately be funded to be a navigator in your state doesn't even have to be in your state. This is what has some people's ears being tweaked a little bit to think, are we really hearing the way being paid for some private entities to get contracts directly from CMS to provide navigator services instead of the types of agencies, community-centered agencies that have been doing the work up to this point? We don't know what funding is going to look like. We certainly know that the presence of in-person assistance in states will be dramatically reduced, and you can bet that that means less people connecting to coverage, certainly the most appropriate coverage, and probably a drop in enrollment moving forward for the next open enrollment period. You can read the final rule for yourself. We make that link available. You can read the CMS press release that talks about this a little bit more. And we finally share with you a health affairs blog post that talks about the importance of in-person assistance and what it's going to look like with these dramatic changes being made to the navigator requirements. You can send us your story, ask your question, or send us an email, and you can do all of that at healthwatchwisconsin.org. Thanks for joining us.